Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the formula that is used by many professional gamblers, as well as stock market traders and that is the Kelly Criterion. Now, the formula was actually created by a computer scientist called John Kelly, and he did that way back in 1956 in a paper. Now, this formula is also sometimes known as Fortune's Formula, and that's because this guy, Edward Thorpe, applied the formula to win at Blackjack, and there's a whole bunch of other books that you can read about him. And if you want me to make a video specifically, hit like or drop a comment below and I'll do just that. It's not just applied in gambling, it's also applied in the stock market. And you may have heard of the hedge fund renaissance, which is run by a guy called Jim Simons. He uses this formula as well in order to calculate what his staking size should be on a particular market trade. That all sounds really complicated. So let me just break it down really simply for you. Essentially the Kelly criterion formula can be used to calculate the optimum position size for any given event. Now, in today's example, we're going to be looking at the gambling specific Kelly criterion as opposed to the stock market one, which we might do in a later video. Now, it's made up of four very simple factors. The first is your equity position, which is obviously your starting balance. You also need the expected return of a given event, which in gambling we can get through market uh, odds. And then you need the probability of winning and the probability of losing. And that's where it's going to get a little bit more technical and interesting for people who are involved in professional gambling. So all of this will come together and calculate the perceived edge that you have over an event. So essentially, we're using all these four variables to come up with our position size and therefore how much you should wager on that probability. So let's take a look at an example of a sporting event where we have two teams. Now, in this scenario, team A is expected to have have a small advantage over team B. It could be because they have a marquee player, it could be that they're just on a bit of a winning streak, or it could be that they're just a really good team who often beats team B when they come into a contest. Now, due to this, we can log on to our betting app and find that the exchange is offering $1.90 for this bet, which means if you bet a dollar, you can expect 90 cents in return. Now, this implies a probability of 52.6% that team A wins. I'm gonna make another video on implied probabilities and if I've done so, I'll leave it a link in the description below. Now, mathematically, we know that leaves team B with a 47.4% probability of winning. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting for people who are interested in statistics because we can complete our own analysis on this sporting event. And through some sort of computer simulation or artificial intelligence machine learning model, we can come up with our own odds of this match. And when we do so, we might find that team A has a more realistic probability of winning of say 55%. Now working backwards, that would reflect odds of $1.80 and leaves obviously team B with a 45% chance of winning. Now, say we have $1,000 in our betting account, how much should we wager on this outcome? Well, with all of these metrics, we can use the Kelly criterion to find out. The amount offered on the exchange was $1.90, which means we get a 90% return on our dollar. And we know that the true probability of winning is actually 55% and the probability we lose is 45%. So the equation is simply as followed. 0.9 times 0.55 minus 0.45 divided by 0.9. It's really that easy. And this gives us 0.05, which is 5%. Now, if we multiply our bankroll of $1,000 by 5%, we get $50, which is the optimum amount we should wager on this event. This is where it's really important to understand the formula. Had our probability calculations been the same at the market, the Kelly criterion would have returned a negative number, which would have implied that we had no edge. So we had have done our calculations and come up with a probability of team A winning of say 60%, then the calculation would have returned an even higher number to reflect the greater edge that we had over this event occurring. And that's the, all there is to it. That is the Kelly criterion. This is something that is used in professional gambling and it's quite an interesting concept to understand. You can also apply it to the stock market and if that's what you'd like another video on, make sure you drop that comment below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.